Welcome to our worship service from Grace Lutheran Church, Hastings, Michigan. We're glad you could join us. Today, I wanted to share a few mission minutes with you. God's creation calendars are available for you to pick up. A community worship and celebration of a meal after 10 a.m. worship on the 29th is getting planned for for the end of this month. We hope that you can join us. We're looking for a funeral meal coordinator. We hope that you can consider being able to spearhead to provide for folk who might need a meal after a funeral. Social activities is getting ready to go on October 14th to a play, Forever Plaid, at Turkeyville. We hope that you can enjoy that time. A book study is on its way, so please put your orders in for the book, Jesus and the Jewish Roots of the Eucharist. The cost is $24. If you do not have the funding, we will make that happen for you. Our annual crop walk is coming uh, a week from today, so we hope that you're able to be a part of that. Trunk Retreat is scheduled for October 31st. We hope that you can start bringing in candy. We hope that we have more than enough. We are thankful. There are money counters that are now needed. Uh, we have one retiring, and so we need to replace her. And it's just good at this point to know that we're kind of down by a couple uh, to go ahead and try to replace. So if there's a team of people or a couple individuals who can come and count money, please let the office know or Deborah Wilkie herself. Grace Projects uh, has a need. We have purchased the HVAC. It is in place. It's still being worked on, but it is functioning for air conditioning and the heating. It just is not working with the fresh air working with those two parts. So we are looking for replacing the funds or replenishing the funds that we're expending on that, which is $25,252. We thank you for your generosity at already funding that project. We just would like to replace that once we spend it as we are getting ready for uh, other projects that are happening around the church. We hope to start at least doing something with the parking lot and that is needing to be replenished so we can move forward with that. That is the brief mission minutes I will share with you this day. May we enjoy worship at this time. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we're afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second son and said the same, and he answered, Sir, I will go. But he never did go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, The first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of the righteous, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. Even after you saw it, 
You did not change your mind and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Friends, we have the Word of God given to us that we are challenged by the authority to follow God's will, to follow God's way. It is just like the two sons, the first who said, no, I'm not going to go out in the field and work. And then the second one who said he would, but never did make it. The first one did the will of the Father. We, too, are called to do the will of God. What is that? What is that will? It's to accept and love all people. May we be empowered in many and various ways to love God and share that love with others. Let us pray. Dear God, help us always to do your will and love others in your name. All this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. See you next week. Thanks for coming. Grace, mercy, peace to you from the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. By what authority? Well, there's a good question. Authority is the question of the day, or is it a question only of the past? Can we even allow authority to have a place in our lives here and now? We live in a time when authority is rightly questioned. And questioning authority is not new according to the gospel reading we have today. And to an extent, those in power from our gospel reading had every right to question Jesus's authority. After all, what had Jesus done? What had he said that would justify his rather bold claims? Before we vilify the chief priests and the elders of the people, we should be honest. Their question for today, by what authority, is often our question. Many claim authority, even when they have no true authority. People just grab authority, and that authority, which is just taken, because it can be taken, should be questioned. Most of the time, you get authority based on a position to which you are elected, or given by your job description, or blessed with, such as being a parent. In fact, as we well know, many people's authority is often rejected just because you hold an office or a job or a position that has had the history of authority. We now know that authority is not necessarily granted to you. Authority, my friends, is proved, tested, lived. It isn't, we know people will question it, resist it, and even reject it. In fact, in today's climate, we find that I truly have no authority, and I wonder if I ever had authority as a pastor. I am astonished, saddened, and dismayed by those who claim authority when it comes to God, and yet have absolutely no sense that kind of claim actually has in life. And any time personal authority starts to take the place of God's authority, we, my friends, are in big trouble. As a preacher, I am granted authority to preach the Word of God, but Jesus' words this week remind me that I have never presumed that authority, or take it for granted. The authority to preach is sacred, and I mean that. 
I am invited into places and spaces that are holy, including the pulpit. As soon as I think I deserve to be here in the pulpit, I have violated that space. I don't deserve to be here, but I do belong here, I believe. I have been invited here by the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, by people of Grace Lutheran Church and Bishop Satterley of the Northwest Lower Michigan Synod. Yes, I have been invited into this pulpit, but more importantly, I have been given authorization by the one who exists outside of ourselves, our good and gracious God. My friends, we live in a time when authority is not a given, and for us, my friends in Christ. That means authority on every level. Far too long pastors have assumed authority for interpreting the Bible, which now means many people lack biblical literacy. Not because they don't know the Bible, or don't have enough information about the Bible, or because there are not enough planned Bible studies, but because we have communicated in teaching, discussion, and preaching that people cannot read it on their own. The answer to biblical illiteracy is not more knowledge, teaching, or study. It's empowering people to read and interpret and trust that their experience of God really matters and that it makes a difference that they read and understand what God is trying to tell them. Far too long the church has insisted that certain beliefs and claims about God should take over experience of God, that only those in the know can really know God. And as a result, pastors have protected their authority as teachers and residents as if I really have the final answer to God's grace. I know better. I don't. God's grace is abundant, and God is the one who shares it with each and every one of us. For far too long, the church has preached that a sufficient faith is a creedal faith. Believe it, and you are saved. Come to church, listen to a sermon, and you are good to go. My friends, I know that my sermon has absolutely no authority at all if the preached word does not compel each and every one of us to live out the gospel, to live out our faith, to tell others about Jesus. Sermons have no authority at all if they don't help each and every one of us interpret the word to the eyes of the world in God's name. The word of God has no authority at all if the preached word does not articulate what it looks like to embody faith in the real world. I feel blessed, actually, when people are questioning my authority, because people should, according to Jesus. True authority demands a perceived and unmistakable connection between who I am and what I do, between what I say and what I actually do. Did you notice the difference between the two boys? One said, no, I'm not going out and working. And the other one said, yeah, I am. The one who said no actually did what his father wanted. And the one who said, sure, I'll do it, did not. We should be consistent. Authority never goes over well when it is demanded. This is, in part, what Jesus is saying. There is a correlation between word and deed, between ideas and implementation, between vision and action. Authority should only be granted when there is integrity. If people enter into positions of authority with 
hardly a nod to how their words are lived out. Their authority should, at the very least, be questioned and ultimately be stripped of its power if it's found not to be a true authority. Somehow, some way, and especially these days, I, as a preacher of the Church of Jesus Christ, need to incarnate an authority that reveals the integration of myself and the call that Jesus Christ has given me. In fact, I would say, all of us need to take Jesus into our lives and identify with Jesus. In fact, I would say all of us need to go and take Jesus to others. The truest test of authority is whether or not we believe in and make possible Emmanuel, God with us in this world in this church, in this place, in this space. Let us take God to others. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we go. Amen.